Former Packer Marshall Newhouse joins me on the show today to talk about the matchup, Super Bowl 58, plus why the Packers are an offensive line factory. Washington standout Roma Dunze, who could be in the division very soon with the Chicago Bears, top 10 pick potentially. He's on the show today. And if that weren't enough, Brandon Rice, the son of Jerry Rice, also a future NFL receiver, he is on the show today. A loaded, locked on Packers from Radio Row starts right now. You are Locked On Packers, your daily Green Bay Packers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap. A newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet and the show for fans who know what happened. They want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked on Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Let's start the show. With Marshall Newhouse, former Packers offensive lineman, we break down a little bit of Super Bowl. We talk about the fact that the Packers seem to just grow offensive linemen on trees. Uh, A really fun conversation. Let's do it. We're here, Radio Row, Las Vegas, Super Bowl 58. It's the Chiefs and the 49ers. Everyone wants to talk about the quarterbacks. I'm here, Marshall Newhouse, longtime NFL offensive lineman. The games are still won and lost in the trenches. And we have two contrasting styles. So we've got the Chiefs. They want to blitz. Steve Spagnolo is going to bring guys from everywhere, from the heavens. Right. Um, and Steve Wilkes, it's a little. We're going to show you, and then we're going to back out, or we might show you and come. Mm-hmm. So let, let's just start with the, the Chiefs' defense. What kind of problems does, with an offense when you when you have zero pressure? Like, what is that? What are you What are you worried about as an offensive lineman there? Yeah, based on your formation, you're looking at, you know, who are the known rushers? Who are our high priority guys? A lot, Chris Jones. The odds of Chris Jones dropping the coverage are pretty low, so you're you're pinpointing him. You're pinpointing, uh, you know, well he's now injured. Charles Mini, who's of the world, the Carlos of the world, and most likely those are our guys. And then you pick a one a one linebacker DB because it's still a numbers game. And so if they want to bring more than you can block, as long as we're on the same page with the running back and the quarterback, he's got hots uh, either on the right edge or left edge. The running back knows where he's going to at least get chip help or get a piece of a guy to give a quarterback an extra half a second to a second to get the ball off. And so it's just about being able to communicate, communicate quickly, communicate in noise, and have your known rushers beforehand. And so, they're, listen, Spags has a lot of stuff, but they're going to dial it down to what San Francisco does as a game plan. And so as San Francisco, you're like, all right, we can go through all the pressure packages. We'll do that stuff all week. But we're going to narrow it down to his most likely things that he'll do. We'll have options ready. We'll have checks ready, screen checks ready. We'll have, you know, running backs get, going even empty and making them kind of unravel from their their simulated blitz look. And so there's a lot of ways to, to, to do the chess match. But uh, as a line, as long as you're on the same page between, you know, tackle guard center and then the quarterback knows where you're going, things usually work out. Because ultimately, you want to convert third downs. You don't need to hit a home run, but you also don't want negative plays. So avoiding negative plays. So the other side of this is the 49ers and – the, the simulated pressure that this is like the new hotness, even though it's the old hotness, like Mike Zimmer has been doing this for a long time. Right. But everyone wants to live in this world now, it seems like. And so what, what is what is different about that that creates confusion in the front? Well, you know, you can do it a lot from, you know, different formations. And so Spadge was doing it uh, out of, you know, a three, two, six, three down linemen, two linebackers and six mm-hmm. DBs. And so that makes defining who are the known rushes harder. Uh, so they're doing personnel matchups, personnel mix-ups. And then on, on San Francisco side, Wilkes likes to do similar, but they ultimately like to rely on the idea that Bosa's going to get home more often than not, uh, that Fred Warner's going to be able to cover your tight end for longer than you can hold the ball. And so they rely on that a little more. But, yeah, both coaches, both defense coordinators, in moments where you're it, you're against the chains, as we say, second and long, third and long, where there's this limited stuff that you can do and you're probably passing, you're probably dropping back, that's when they really like to get really creative And so, again, it's about communication in those moments on the offensive line. Um, But, you know, as far as the the way they differ, I think Wilkes ultimately just brings more and makes you get the ball out of your hand. And so, you know, of all the people to blitz, Pat Mahomes is a guy that you necessarily don't want to blitz. But we saw in the Baltimore in the AFC Championship game, they had a one where Kyle Kyle Hamilton got a free run. 
they ended up correcting that um, because Pat got the ball out. He, he threw it past the line scrimmage, incomplete pass, lived to play another down. Um, but they corrected it. And so it's a chess match. You're seeing what they bring, what kind of their thought process for that game. Because generally, you don't want to be, when you're putting a game plan together, you don't want to be too all over the place. You want your players to be able to focus on what is the thesis of this game? What is what we're attacking on them? And so when they show it early in the game, who can correct the quickest? Who can really mitigate disaster, but also expose holes and flaws in these fronts? One of the, one of the things that has been a talking point this year is scoring being down. And a lot of that, it seems like, is related to this quarterback play. But there's also offensive line play. And it seems like it's it's hard and maybe harder than ever to see what an offensive lineman is doing in college and translating into what's happening in the NFL. Why do you think that's changed? I, listen, it, it truly is a combination of so many things. So people will talk about the l- l- lack of development of offensive linemen. And there's some of that, you know, from these college spread uh, teams, there's less emphasis on like, the physicality of pass rushers and then guys who can do more as linemen. There's also more, I say this like in the nicest way possible, more freaks who <laughs> rush the pass yeah, yeah, than ever yeah. before. Teams are now too deep with pass rushing guys um, who have been learning the craft at an earlier age. And then, yeah, defenses are now, its I won't call it bend no break, but they're playing over the top of everyone. They're like, you're not beating us deep. We will take the chance that on a 10, 12, 15 play drive, you will make a mistake. You'll just kick a field goal or you'll, throw, you'll turn the ball over or you'll punt. And so they're playing a lot more cover for they're playing their safeties off, running and rallying and tackling the ball, making quarterbacks, you know, Spags did that incredible thing um, where he did like a little the, the safety loop. spin. Yeah. And it's crazy. <laughs> but ultimately, they still ended up in too high. Right. It looked like one for a second. Then it was two. And then it's no, like, which one is the one who is it? But nothing's ever that right. different. But it, it makes the quarterback pause for half a second. And yeah. so we're just trying to get home. And so they're just trying to prevent things over the top because that just it's, it's arbitrage. It's like there's only so many minutes in a game. There's so you know, there's an average of seven day drives per team. We're trying to limit how many times you're gonna have explosive plays, and ultimately that leads to the entire league having scoring down. So from offensive line development, which I still think is overblown, it's getting better. We've got incredible guys, and then yeah, there's just so many pass rushers now. You've got it. coaches who don't prioritize getting the protection right first with chips, help, screens, all that stuff are the ones. If you're stuck in the past, you're going to get beat a lot. Your quarterback's going to have a time to throw of 2.2 because he has to survive. Yeah. And you'll be less effective in the pass game, and that's just what it comes down to. All right, I want to ask a couple a couple Packers questions sure. here. Because um, this the build that they did this year, offensively, mm-hmm. it's essentially unprecedented to have all first and second year players mm-hmm. at the skill positions. We yeah. just have never seen anyone try it at this scale. The amount of productivity they set records, rookies, touchdowns, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Why do you think more teams don't say, "Let's just try this. Let's just <laughs> like we got to. We have to have our veteran receiver. We have to have yeah. our veteran tight end. Like this worked for Green Bay, right? And you know, it's ego ultimately at the end of the day. But I think Green Bay also has a track record of they have drafted well and developed in house and yeah. signed their own guys. I mean, the, the late Ted Thompson, rest his soul. That's what his style was, and it, it people don't realize it frustrated Packers fans. <laughs> Yeah. Because there was guys like Packers fans realize <laughs> they understand, but like something like like the team they had this year comes to fruition where you're like, oh, we're loaded with the young talent because a we we saw value in our system where other teams didn't see value, and then we've given them time to kind of find themselves, and it helps to have a young quarterback with more mobility on the roster setting. Um, and then obviously those guys are getting coached up. I think I give for all the credit. I don't really know anyone else in that staff, but from all intents that I've heard. Um, they've got an incredible roster of coaches that are coaching these guys up, and they're putting them in positions to win. That's ultimately what it comes down to is you kind of are given the cards you're dealt. You, you pick a little bit in draft, and you pick who you want, but there's limits to that. There's no NIL. There's not just right. get a, you know this completely, completely free market. And so it's incumbent on the coaches to scheme. It's, it's harder. It's like you've got to do more, you know, things to – if that guy is good at that, I've got to maximize that and minimize his downside. On every position, on every play. And the best coaches do that well. And so if you've got a tackle who's really talented, but he's raw, and we don't want we want to reduce the amount of times he's got a just a pure pass rush one on one. We're gonna throw more play action. Yeah. We're gonna allow more screens, creative screens, wide receiver screens so we can get out on the edges, a mismatch against DBs. We're gonna do chips, you know, and we're gonna do actually more run action. And then if uh, offense averages 65 to 70 plays a game if we've reduced his one-on-one pass rushes from 25 to 23 21 right. 20 that's less opportunities for pressure 
less opportunities for sacks. And, like, if you think about it in margins that way, that adds up over the course of a season. Sure. Do that with receivers. Do that with – I mean, it's just like every position. So it can get granular, but that's where the margins are. Everyone is tighter than you realize in the NFL. This is the best of the best talent-wise. So you're looking for any edge possible, and the best coaches are doing that across their roster. Why do you think the Packers have been an offensive line factory for, like, 15 years now across coaching staffs, across head coaches? Like, they just keep – Zach Tom, yeah. fourth-round pick, Rasheed Walker, right. seventh-round pick. And yeah. it's just like they, they grow on trees in Green Bay. It's hard to, it's hard to, to say. You know, I was there with, you know, T.J. Langs, the Josh Sittens of yeah. the world, Dave Bakhtiari, um, Corey Lindsley, like guys who weren't obvious, just guys who were like, oh, these can be a pro bowler. But they grew into it. There was a lot of meat on the bone as far as the development was left. But I think a mentality as well of just uh, guys who have this stick to and this mindset of growth. And there's more. And there's a chip on their shoulder. And so they figured out some formula. I was part of that where I was a, I was a compensatory draft pick in the fifth round. It's like I played 11 years in the, in the NFL. That's against the odds. Yeah. You know, started, start, played 130 games, started for, you know, multiple Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. That's a mentality. On some that, really good teams. Uh, and it's funny, in the scouting process coming out, I never talked to the Packers. I didn't go on an official visit. I didn't talk to them at the Combine. But they saw something in me or they heard from someone else and took a chance. And then I tried to do my best to prove them wrong and prove myself right. So it's a combination of those things, but they figured something out, absolutely. Roma Dunze, future NFL receiver, probably future NFL star receiver, joins us next on Locked on Packers. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The Nissan Rogue, perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for, well, almost anything. Then you got the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder, room up to eight. I need that right now. I've got two kids. It's getting crowded in my car. I need 284 horsepower with 6,000 pounds of towing because who knows? Who knows what I'm carrying behind us? I, I gotta get a jet ski just so I can pull it around, right? I got the horsepower. Why not do it? Why not do it? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop Nissan USA. Com. And thanks to everyone who makes Locked on Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Locked on has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now you can find it on Amazon Fire TV. Locked on Sports Today here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked on, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked on Sports Today on Amazon Fire, the channel. It's there. Go find it right now. All right. We're here, Las Vegas, Super Bowl week, Super Bowl 58. It's the Chiefs and the 49ers. And we're with Robo Dunze from Washington. A potential top 10, top, top, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you top 10 for sure. Uh, pick here in the, in the upcoming NFL draft. What has, since the season has ended, I know it didn't end the way that, that you would have liked, but what is, what is, this experience getting ready for the draft been like for you so far? Right, it's been awesome. I mean, uh, it's a time period for me that I just be able to get to train and kind of focus on that, which I love. You know, I love the grind. So being able to f focus on myself and my game, like um, without, you know, the distractions of, you know, I'm out of school right now. So um, that it, it's an awesome experience to be able to do these things like this, all the opportunities that's come up. It's, it's fun. Understanding, okay, you're going to get to go to the NFL and, and play under the bright lights and all those things. College atmospheres. They're a little different, though. And you, you got to play in some really cool um, college football playoff, but also just like in the Pac-12, there's a ton of great atmospheres. Is there a place where you're like, man, I'm never going to get to play at Austin again or like a place like that or even even at Washington? Like I'm, you're going to miss that. Yeah, definitely. I think I'll definitely miss specifically uh, playing at UW, at UW, the greatest setting. Um, you know, they just installed the lights and we had I, I can't I remember the, the Cal game when I scored my touchdown and the lights are flicking on back and forth. It's just a. <laughs> It's just a, an office, a, awesome atmosphere, and you know we, we hadn't lost in that stadium for for two years, so um, it, it was a lot of fun being back there. And you know I, I can't wait for the moment that it kind of settles into like, man, I really will never be able to play in that stadium <laughs> again, right? Yeah. So um, it's exciting. I'm excited to go back as a fan and be able to enjoy the experience. Is there something where you're like, okay, the NFL? I know, I know, this is what I'm good at, but this is what I gotta, I want to tweak and, and improve at before we get to the next level. 
I think that one of the bigger focuses for me right now is just making sure my routes are, are, are even more crispy, you know, the details and, and everything just becomes that much, more, the margin of error becomes that much more smaller. So just improving it, you know, um, even even more. And then uh, uh, definitely my releases, you know, there's a lot of man, man, man coverage in the league and a lot of press coverage. So just making sure I'm smooth through my releases and making sure I'm not having any hiccups in that sort of my game. Who do you watch around around the NFL when, when you're going, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna borrow a little bit of that. Yeah. Let me take a little bit of that. Yeah. I watched the most of Monte Adams film. I yeah. love, I love him because you know we have we have a similar you know build, and he's just so shifty in his route running and his his savvy. It's it's uh it's like no other. So I really enjoy watching his film and learning from him. That's a great answer. Uh, so the the um opportunity that you have here, you know, you have your your time in college, but now for a franchise, you get to redefine yourself in the NFL. What do you what, when people say this is this is how Roma Dunze plays? What do you want them to say? If I had a number one word, I would say tough. Like you know, I, I like you know watching a football player who, who who gets you know gets dirty. Like in the passing game, like in the in the blocking game, like just someone who goes out there and you could tell that they love playing football. They can they understand it. It's a violent, it's a physical game, and um, to be able to have that that attribute and people describe me as that, I think that would be awesome. When you have a when you're watching a corner on tape. Okay, it's gonna be me and this guy all day. What are you looking for as you try and find ways to attack him? Is it are you most focused is on your release or uh, what? What is what is the the thing that you're most focused in on? I think one of the biggest thing is releases for sure. Just looking at his, his tendencies in press, um, you know, which hands he likes to shoot, which way he likes to open up, what at what depth he likes to open up his hips, all different factors, you know, and considering. Um, um, what, what, what I want to try and attack him when I play him, and especially his eyes, you know, looking at where his eyes are. Is, is his eye to, eyes in the backfield a lot of the time? Can we hit him on a double move? Is he looking at me the whole time? Can I, you know, deceive him in some sort of way? So a bunch of different things, but uh, a lot of press, looking at their press technique. You're awesome with the ball in the air, tracking the ball, finding it, body control, those kinds of things. Was that was that something you always just sort of naturally had, or is that something you were able to rep? Like, what do, what do you attribute having that ability to? Yeah, I think I always, you know, had a natural ability to do it, but it was something that, you know, was like kind of hidden in my game for a long time that I had to kind of, you know, awaken. And then that just, that was awakened through a lot of the reps and practice and building that connection with Mike and, you know, doing some box out drills with the basketball team and, <laughs> and some different things that, you know, kind of just allowed my mind and everything to kind of connect in that way that allowed me to go out there and make those plays. So when it started happening, you know, you know, early on in the season and just kept kind of rolling and rolling and the kind of snowball effect allowed me to, you know, have that great comfortability with it. I need to hear more about the box out drills. Tell me, tell me about this. Okay. Yeah. Well, coach, shout out to coach Junior Adams and coach, coach Will Conroy on the basketball team. Um, yeah. Coach Junior Adams connected me with him and, I was just doing some basketball drills with them, just learning how to box out, just making sure I was getting up and grabbing the ball with two hands and being firm with it coming down. And, um, you know, it's a bit different, but I think, you know, the aspect of just being dominant when the ball is in the air, when the basketball is in the air, kind of like those rebounders do it, 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 in the basketball world, um, it, it's similar. It kind of gave me that mindset. You know Devontae Adams, a basketball player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I could tell. Look at his releases. He looked like he dribbled in between his legs. <laughs> Behind the back, he's got it all. How's your basketball game? It's solid. It's solid. You know, I'm more of a thrasher. I never develop my shot too much, but I can, you know, I hit them when I need them. But I'm more of a thrasher. So when you when you go in at the combine, you're gonna this is gonna be that'll be your first opportunity to meet with teams. Do you do you expect to work out? Or are you gonna do do the things there? Or, or when is the when is the first chance they're gonna get to see you do stuff on the field? Yeah, at the combine, I'll be doing everything. That's not, that's my plan. I'm not not looking to you know skip out on it, on anything. You know, I want everybody to you know you know I want to showcase my talents. I think I, I you know have a unique skill set and. I think I'll test well as well. So I'm excited to be able to go out there and compete and show, show everything that I got. And then, you know, I'll let that, the cards lay where it may with that and then figure out what I want to do pro day. Are you the kind of guy who, you know, let's say Marvin Harrison Jr. goes, Malik Neighbor goes, like, are you going to remember that those guys went ahead of you? Are, are, you, are you that type of player who's going to be like, because it's not going to be, it's not like you're going to be naming 15 receivers right. who go ahead of you, but like, are you going to file that away? Like, okay. Okay. Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, I, I think I'm the best receiver in the draft. So to, to see anybody go before me will definitely be, be be a disappointment. But they're great receivers, and I want I wish them a bunch of tremendous success. But yeah, it's extra motivation, 100. percent Is there a cornerback like who 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 will you get in the NFL where you'll be most excited to have gotten them? Like in this draft? No, no, no. In, well, it could be in the draft, but like in the NFL, when you get to the league and you get to go against these these guys every, oh. every week. Like when you when you score on this person, you're like, okay, I'm I made it. Like this is this okay. is real now. <laughs> not, Man, I'm not trying I to get you in trouble. Nah, no worries. I think any of them. I mean, it'd be awesome. I think to you know score against the ones that are you know Patrick Sertain, um, 
um, Jalen Ramsey. Um, I want to go against Trent McDuffie because he's, you know, a UW alum. Yeah. I was facing I, against him when I was a freshman, so I love to make a play on him. But, you know, there's a bunch of guys. I, I say those three, that would be exciting. Tell me, tell me what you're doing with Sharpie. I'm with Sharpie. They got me out here. Um, you know, I'm sporting the, the Sharpie Adidas, the tech here. It's it's um, a, a great collab. And the UW Purple? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was They did a great job. And I'm just out here um, uh, sporting them, also supporting this, this S-Gel pen that they got me. They're going to be alongside me throughout my whole journey, um, my rookie year. Um, I'm going to be signing my first contract with, with the Sharpie uh, S-Gel pen. And, um, you know, I've been signing, signing autographs with Sharpie for a long time. I stay after and sign uh, autographs for all the fans with Sharpie. Um, so it's super exciting to be with them. It's it, it's, a, it's a very elite pen. I'm particular about my pens now. Like, oh, yeah? I'm taking my notes. So it's smooth. It's it, it's silky. It, no no smudge, no bleed. Like, exactly what I need. So. When you sign that first contract, what, is, what do we have something in mind we're going to go pick out and, and grab? or um, Something for my mom. Something for my mom. Where's a, a car or a house? I'll, I'll get her again. That's a good, a good answer. Good yeah, answer. Yeah, for sure. We close the show with a trifecta of an interview. Brandon Rice, son of Jerry Rice, former USC standout. He joins us next on Locked on Packers. Did you know that even if you had a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to an IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info, claim as of quarter one, 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. And thanks to everyone who makes Locked on Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. As I told you earlier, Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 streaming channel on YouTube. And now you can find it on Amazon Fire TV. Locked on Sports today here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked on plus our national shows covering every league. Find the Locked On Sports Today channel on Amazon Fire TV now. All right, we're here Super Bowl Radio Row, Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas, which is a good place to be at all times, but especially for Super Bowl week. I'm here with Brandon Rice, USC receiver, future NFL receiver, and of course son of Jerry Rice, 49ers, Raiders, although that was Oakland, not Las Vegas. You just got back from the Senior Bowl. What did you go down there trying to prove? I just uh, I went out there just trying to go ahead and get a feel for the game and just noticing what platform we had to go ahead and showcase our abilities. And now we were just all on the same playing field. A lot of guys had 100 catches and 1,000 yards a season. I was in such a stacked wide receiver room. You know, we didn't we weren't able to get as many catches. But I felt as though my production was amazing. And just going out there and showing what I could do as well as what seeing what other guys could do, I felt as though I did just that. And I feel as though that I put myself on a platform where I'm like, hey, guys, this is this is who I am. I can go out here and compete with the top guys day in and day out. And I feel as though that I should be selected on your team. And if you guys want a dog and a person that's going to come take a veteran spot, I feel I'm your player. Do you feel like you had a little bit extra to prove from a I'm going to work hard standpoint just because like, okay, yeah, everyone knows Jerry Rice is Jerry Rice. But there could be people who come in and say, okay, well, but he's Jerry Rice's son. He's going to get opportunities. You feel like I have to prove a little bit more just because of what those perceptions might be? Oh, for sure. You know, just going back and forth with some of the guys, a lot of guys felt like, hey, like, you got an invite because Jerry Rice's son. <laughs> oh, well, shoot, now I'm over here torching you. So what's up? <laughs> <laughs> who, 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 had, who had the most to say? Ah, oh, Man, it's not the fact that he had the most to say. It's the fact that he's the most competitive. Yeah. And I feel as though Kyrie Jackson is that guy. Uh, I watched him for two days straight before I even went against him. And honestly, I just knew from a, uh, my own personal standpoint that I was going to have to be ready and have to go about it a certain way. So did you ever have a moment where you sat down and went, all right, my dad's Jerry Rice. I have to find a way to differentiate myself from him. For sure. Oh, our games are too totally different separate games and uh from my personal standpoint i'm kind of more physical um i have a little bit more speed and i'm able to do a couple of things and he's able to do a couple you know things just because he's a little skinnier and uh he can go ahead and get in and out of his routes a little bit better than me so you know <laughs> i'm gonna give him that but hey i'm faster 
What was it like? I mean, how, how many how, how many opportunities did you get? I mean, he played forever. When you were younger, to, to you were you were pretty young, but to be around NFL locker rooms. Ah, uh, I wasn't able to go ahead and be around his type of locker room, but I was able to go ahead and be around the Minnesota Vikings locker mm-hmm. room. Uh, my mom got remarried to a person named Ray Edwards. So I was able oh, to yeah. go ahead and just like being in, in that environment, see Adrian Peterson and Jared Allen and all those type of guys. And it was kind of crazy, man. It set you up for, for where you are right now. Exactly. I, I heard some, I heard some talks to people that were in Mobile and they said, you know, the thing about Ryan Rice, is he's bigger than I thought in terms of like, you were, you were better put together than they, than they looked on tape. Did you, in the weight room a little bit or do you think that just in person it's a different it's a different vibe oh a lot of guys may think i'm a little bit skinnier or a lot of guys think i'm too big honestly i feel as though i'm cut a little bit different um i take care of my that uh just dietary needs very differently than a lot of guys and it's a big point because honestly what you do off the field is what you're going to do on the field and it all correlates together when you see a lot of these receivers that are around in the nfl have success early on uh, what do you think, like, hey, I can come in and help a team do this right away? I can lead, lead by example. I'm going to be a worker. Work ethic is what I come from, and that's where I know that I can go ahead and separate myself. I have to. I know that if I'm not putting in the work every day in and day out, that I'm not going to go ahead and make the big catch when it's needed on uh, Sundays. And, you know, it's overtime with, like, the DeAndre Hopkins. That just comes from work ethic and time and time and time again, just putting yourself in those situations so you can go ahead and make the most of that situation. Tell me what you're what you're doing with Breathe Right. Breathe Right's amazing, man. Just watching, it's so iconic, just watching Jerry and go ahead and just, you know, where the Breathe Night laser strip is blacked out. It's so cool with the paint. Man, I want to be a part of that. I love what Breathe Right does for me. It allows me to go ahead and, Open up my uh, sinuses, my congestion. I get a lot of bad congestion, especially at nighttime. Just from traveling back and forth and in Arizona. And, man, we got some bad allergies out there, man. <laughs> and just so it's a great recovery method. And it allows me to go ahead and open up my pores and open up my nose so I can go ahead and get the oxygen that I need. Is there a corner, uh, uh, whether it's whether it's someone you know or whether it's someone you've watched where you go, I just I can't wait to get the opportunity to go against this guy. Of course, you got the Jalen Ramsey, the Sauce Gardner's, the Jalen Johnsons, but the thing is, I need to go against somebody who I've played with. Well, a couple of guys. You got Keely Ringo and you got Christian mm. Gonzalez, mm. and I can't wait to go ahead and just be able to match up against those guys again. Uh, it, it, something where you, your relationship with your quarterback. This is something that we hear about chemistry and those kinds of things. What are what are those conversations like when you got? I see this out there. Like, what are the walk me through a conversation that, that maybe that happened where you're like, hey, I'm 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 playing in this way. I'm gonna run this this way, and let's connect. For sure, uh, some corners go ahead and hey, bro, Caleb, he's playing a little bit top heavy. He's playing over the top. He's scared of getting beat deep. Let's go ahead and hit him with a back shoulder double move. Bang bang. And the safety's kind of biting a little bit. Let's go ahead and run a dig and up. Stuff like that. He's bailing too easily, man. We can go ahead and hit him on a stop route. You got to go ahead and be able to evaluate these DBs and get back to your quarterback because that's what the, that's what makes the game so amazing. You get to go ahead and uh, change things on the go. Last thing, uh, is Caleb really as good as everyone says? Man, he's a generational talent. And if guys aren't going to go ahead and be ready for him to come and change a locker room dynamic, and the culture, and go ahead and win Super Bowls, yeah, don't draft him. That's okay. (laughs) He's going to do it. I promise you. He's going to go out there and put his best foot forward, and he's going to lead. He's a leader among men, and he's going to lead the men. Is there a play that you can remember where you're just like, I'm sorry, wait, he did what? Like, how did he do that? Man, oh. That throw along the sideline. There's so many. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen him in practice, too, where you're just like, wait, what is is going on? So uh, how about about this one, Washington? Um. We had a play that we never threw to me once in practice. It was supposed to go to the complete other side. Caleb rolls out to the right. He's getting too much pressure. He turns around. He's like, excuse my language, F it. Brendan's down there somewhere. Chucks it up. I make the catch in the corner of the end zone. Man, the stadium goes crazy. Those are the moments you play for, though. The moments you play for. All right, thanks to Marshall Newhouse, to Romadunze, to Brandon Rice for joining me on Radio Row from Las Vegas. We're still here. We're back here tomorrow. And I think we're going to have interviews into next week because a lot more to come 
here on Locked on Packers. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts. Google Podcasts doesn't exist anymore. But wherever you find podcasts, you'll find Locked on Packers. Go subscribe on, on Instagram. Locked on Packers on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter. We're stepping up our socials game. Go check us out there so you can stay Locked on Packers.